virtual reality. A Bleachy from the Real Housewives of New York City. Hello. Oh, Danny and I are so excited to have you in studio. We've been looking forward to this. Yes, yeah, same. I know, because well, I have been having some fun with you in the studio over the past year and you being on Roni and everything like that, but Evan hasn't gotten to meet Abe the Babe in person yet. I know. It's, it's good to see <laughs> you in person. Name. You're definitely babing today. So <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> but I feel like there's so much to get into. This has been such uh, an interesting season of The Real Housewives of New York City. And you've been kind of involved a little bit in some of the more Oops. tense <laughs> scenes from shrooms to Bitcoin. I mean, where I, where should we start? Yeah, you guys are I, the host. I, No, we're letting you I'm take kinda, the lead. Because it's funny, because last, I mean, whenever, it's funny when, obviously, meeting new cast and everything like that, we have friends that are always so curious. I'm like, oh, how is everybody? I'm like, Abe and Aaron are f***ing fun. That's like whenever I, like, whenever I see you guys, like, out at events or something like that, I'm like, you guys are just a good time. And that's where when I saw the trailer, like, just even before the season started, when I was like, what? I know. Where's the fun? <laughs> what is happening? Like, how was, of course, you guys lived it, but even preparing, like, when you saw the trailer come, how were you, at, when you guys were like, okay, this is going to be a lot about us and the highs and the low lows, how did you guys emotionally prepare for this? Well, I think the first thing was we were, you know, we lived it and yeah. filmed it, so we it wasn't a surprise. Um... I don't know that we, I would say we emotionally prepared. We just, we had a conversation at the beginning of the season, particularly after, you know, my famous, infamous mushroom comment, where, you know, she she was snappy at me and we had just been going through some real stuff in our relationship, which is, we talk about a little bit at the dinner of the next episode. And we had a conversation. I said, look, we're going to be, this was the beginning of the season. The first, that was the first scene we had filmed at the dinner, at Serendipity. And, so we had a conversation about there's stuff going on in our relationship. Mm -hmm. We're on a reality show. Let's be real about it and talk about it because it's just what's going on in our lives. And, and I also think a lot of couples go through similar things in varying degrees. So Wait, I did just remember, and I want to know, I don't know if you're a gloater. Because That's I, right. like, if you like to gloat, how was the lychee couch when production, when she was like, you can't talk about drugs on camera, and then they cut to Aaron talking about drugs on oh, camera. I, I uh, <laughs> thanked post production for that. I was like, finally, you did something to get my back. It was, it was. Aaron actually was. We were watching it together. She was cracking up. Oh, I do, I do love that. I mean, what were the conversations like going into the season before the shroom comment? You know, sort of in, incited her in that way. Was there a conversation like we're going to be real, or was that sort of like the beginning of okay? If, Obviously, there's some tension. Let's just be real about it moving forward as cameras keep rolling. Well, I mean, it's funny. Last season, I felt like we were actually very real, but a lot of her storyline with with like her stuff she filmed with me, with her family, wasn't shown because there was so much other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get it. There's a finite block of time where they can show stuff. But we doubled down on it. Before, I mean, that was the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a lot of stuff going on in our lives. This is second season so we saw what it was like i personally saw how you could film all you want but they're gonna show like talking about other women out of context <laughs> and swinging and you know all the shit that they showed last season so you you have that but so i could see it being very easy for somebody to say well i'm just going to be more reserved mm -hmm. but that's just the, i mean we kind of did the opposite yeah i mean also i don't really care to be honest. And I mean, hey, there's a whole show on Hulu now about a bunch of Mormons who swing. So you know what? You led the you led the charge. Right? I'm going to take a little credit for that. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to the network about the royalty that they own. Right. Yes, yeah. I feel definitely some cross some cross network <laughs> relations. But I do feel like it kind of is a thing like you and Erin are super open. And we do see on uh, Roni, like a lot of the couples, like some of the guys are more like reserved or like some of the significant others are like, you have fun not gonna do that do you almost feel like there's like an added like pressure of you're like okay well i'm kind of like shit i'm more in this than a lot of the other like plus ones are <laughs> it's it's a i didn't thought about it like that but i guess no mm -hmm. i i don't really think about the other people okay. on the show it's just like if i'm in a scene with aaron it's me and aaron if i'm in a scene with the group it's me and the group and i'm just thinking about that moment and the weird thing is this was surprising to me first season it's weird how quickly you forget that the cameras are there. And I've heard that before, and having experienced it, 
it's not like you completely forget, mm -hmm. but it's also easy if you just allow yourself to just be yourself, mm -hmm. that it becomes natural. Yeah. And, you know, if you say something stupid, uh, I mean, I've obviously said many stupid <laughs> things, uh, then whatever. You know, it's like I would say that in private. I would say it amongst a group of friends. What do I care if people see it on TV? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, so. totally. I feel like earlier in the season, I think it was like in the first one or two episodes, Aaron teased that there was some tension in your marriage. And she was like, I'm not ready to talk about it yet. And then we figured out that it was the Bitcoin situation. Was that the only thing that had contributed? Or is there no. anything else that I'll, us I'll viewers aren't seeing? Yeah. So it was representative of kind of a larger, deeper issue. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you guys what it was because it's not that nefarious, <laughs> but it was real. So it rooted back, I'll, I'll keep this brief because I could talk about this at length. We had a handbag business, which I think they show a clip of on the show. Mm -hmm. This was something that I had left my white shoe law firm job to start with Aaron and we put all our money into it, self-funded it and got to the point where we were not really making any money from it. So we lost all our cash. And, uh, you know, it was a very expensive MBA. Is that why I look at it now? <laughs> I learned a lot. But we had our second child. My father was, had, was sick for three years with brain cancer, had just passed away. We had no cash. And so we had all this debt from the business that it was our business, not hers. And mm -hmm. I want to clear that up because it's not like I'm paying debts for her business. It was mm -hmm. ours. And so it was just, you know, the aftermath of that, I restarted both of us from scratch. I started my own law firm, but it took several years to start making real money again. So it was, you know, we had more kids, more bills and still the debt. And there was a bunch of just small things that at a certain point, I just stopped telling Aaron about it because I didn't want to add pressure to her. Part of it, pride also is, you know, I'm a man, mm -hmm. I have yeah. to provide. And I didn't want to take it from our our joint checking account. I wanted to just take care of it all myself. And so there are bills that would come in after that I wouldn't tell her about. And that just snowballed into one small thing, another small thing. So fast forward, this whole Bitcoin thing, we had some Bitcoin in one of our accounts and I had one lingering larger thing that I just wanted to be done with it. So I took the Bitcoin, I sold it, I paid for the debt and we ended up talking about it because she found out about the Bitcoin, obviously, and I then told her about all the other stuff. But what was really liberating was being able to have that honest conversation, even though, I mean, I was in the doghouse for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> when we were filming, it was probably two or three months after she had found, when it all happened, so it was yeah. still pretty fresh. Oh, wow. But we had, you know, it was really, you know, we had a, it was tough, it was yeah. really tough. But now it's it's really at the point where you're know, able to have just an open honest relationship from that but i think the bigger point is that i'm hoping this gets across is i can't tell you how many people reached out to myself and to aaron through dm or friends on text after the episode came out to just say hey i'm i went through something similar or i'm going through something similar maybe it's not the exact same thing but it's it's not about you know selling the bitcoin it's mm -hmm. about not telling your spouse or significant other about something you know important whether mm -hmm. it's financial and it could be other things too but just that people are scared to talk to each other and so hopefully people just start talking to each other in relationships yeah. it's really unhealthy well also because i feel like a lot of people could relate to like you have it you're being like well i was like ashamed of the debt or i wanted to just feel like i you thought you were doing the right thing of handling it by yourself and i'm sure she's like no, the right thing would be telling. Like you both yeah. were kind of in mm -hmm. trying to do the right thing, but just not communicating through it all. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely didn't. I did the wrong thing by not telling her. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Uh, I own that, and yeah. I take accountability for that. But I also think that a lot of a lot of men, specifically, and it's not just men, but I think most of the time it's men take that burden on themselves and when they really don't have to, mm -hmm. even though it might be uncomfortable in the moment to talk about it. And it's, it's a heavy burden to carry. Oh. But uh, anyway, so also that's... So it's hard to like yeah. deal with debt while having kids and everything like that. I feel yeah. like it's really fucking hard. <laughs> I was like, that's what I was even thinking in my head. I'm like, God, and y'all live in New York, so it's not like you are just... Yeah. It's a lot hitting you at once. It's yeah. a lot. And what I've really come to realize is that there are so many people in this country 
really struggling. We're for, we fortunately pulled ourselves out of it. Yeah. And we're good. But we weren't for a while. And, and, and you know, we're still, like, we're living in New York and not like we lived a, an impoverished life. There are people who are really struggling and, and it sucks to see. And, and I want people to know, like, you're not alone. A lot of people are going through this. And if you talk about it, you can unburden yourself and mm. find other people just to relate to them. Yeah. And maybe that makes you feel a little bit better about it and not ashamed about it. I don't know. Yeah. If there is anyone in a situation like this and they're relating to this story, what would be like your number one tip for them to get out of it? Out of debt? Just even like the mental or, or, space that it can put you right. in. Right. Um, just suck it up and <laughs> just have that first conversation and deal with the consequence of that because it is far better to deal with that consequence than waiting a few years mm. and then more shit piles on and then it then becomes about the years of not selling. Yeah. It's way more uncomfortable to have that conversation. Yeah. I, could, I, I know that because I lived it. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. And I, I feel like you and Aaron have been through so much in your marriage, this whole situation, you know, parents getting sick, parents dying after surviving all those situations and doing a little bit of it on TV do you feel like the marriage is bulletproof now do you feel stronger like it definitely stronger yeah. we've been through a lot I mean we, we've we got married young yeah and she was 25 when we got married that's young especially it's for New York New York yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's she jokes baby. you know teen teen bride honestly yeah, yeah. yeah. by New York standards yes teen bride um, vibes so you know we got neither of us wanted to get married at the time too we just fell in love right away and you can't and fight fate can't yeah. fight fate yeah but we've been through a lot we had a business it failed we lost everything that we had we had our car repossessed at the time uh, at one point we had to ask our parents to buy us groceries I think it was bad wow. and then now we've got three kids it, where were you guys living in the city then we're in Bushwick I did not know the lead she's lived in Bushwick okay the this is she's lived in this Bushwick. is game changing okay yeah what stop um like oh my god or? it was in far bushwick, far bushwick? Okay. i'm trying to remember the stop it's been a you're while you're like i'll move to tribeca or past that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well now we're not in tribeca oh, anymore, from you guys are making you're getting yeah. farther away from bushwick <laughs> right well part of why we left bushwick too is my dad was like on his deathbed at this point okay. and going to the my parents live on the upper west they, when when my dad was alive they lived in the upper west is where i grew up so it was an hour and a half just oh. each way to get there, and yeah. then we're just, we got to get back back home. So we're both from the Upper West Side. I don't know if Erin's mentioned she's from New York. <laughs> just <laughs> in passing. Not Staten Island. She in is passing. a city person. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. When she was approached about doing the show, were you initially supportive, or were you a little bit scared? No, I was, pre I was supportive right okay. away. Uh, to me, it was, I mean, there was an opportunity. I didn't know what that would be yet, but obviously having a platform like this i think after the first season was underway i was like what are we what are we doing here what are we yeah. doing? it's weird right like your wife becomes famous quasi famous mm -hmm. and then you know your identity is now like Aaron Leachy's husband or like i'm a glorified plus one <laughs> in that world and so that took some getting used yeah. to and then sharing her with kind of the public and, yeah, uh, what has that been like when people come up to her and even the two of you in public and wanting pictures and asking questions? Do you enjoy it's it? Flattering. Okay. Yeah, okay. For me, it doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. So, like, if it happened a lot, I might get, I might be like, okay, but um, it's flattering. Because I'm not going to pretend that it's not. Okay, that's yeah. good. Because it's also the hard thing too, where it's like becoming famous, like overnight and with your personal life on front and center so it can't just be like oh my god Aaron I love that song it's like Aaron I love how you're a parent this is what I think about your husband and you're like oh I'm just at <laughs> checkout I don't like it's hard to cut yes, yeah. yeah it's happened I, I feel like probably I could see people talking about you to Aaron in front of you and them not even realizing it oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah to be a fly on the wall um, what I am curious because when you're talking about how a lot of the and you learn from it like an honorary MBA the debt started from a business venture you guys tried to do together. Was there more apprehension about getting into Mezcalum together? Like, was there a moment where you're like, maybe try 
this and then, you know, I was eating ramen noodles in Bushwick. So I don't know if I, like, I don't know how we want to approach it. Like, what was the different approach to the new venture you guys are doing? Great question. Because there was obviously a conversation. Yeah. The first thing was we knew we need to bring in a third co-founder. You guys like to swing. We love to <laughs> business swing. Business swinging, yes. We're uh, business swingers. No. Um, but in all seriousness, no, yeah. it was just the two of us in our handbag. Until the very end, we brought in a third co-founder, but that was at the very, very end. But we realized, you know, it can't just be the two of us because we'll kill each other. Yeah. And so Chris, our co-founder, grew up with Aaron. Um, they've been best friends forever. And Chris and I have been best friends for you know, 13, 14 years. So we both trust him. He likes to call himself the glorified marriage counselor of the business, <laughs> which is not untrue. But it's just somebody we both know is kind of a neutral, unbiased. And then we also knew that we needed to bring in investors, bring in advisors, and do something where we didn't have so many SKUs. I know that's super specific, but when we had the handbag business, we had like 40 different SKUs, like you know, eight styles, different colorways that we had to order from China. So with Mescaloon, we're like, okay, it's one SKU. It's one product right now. So that was a lot easier. Are there any ways you guys want to sort of expand the Mescaloon empire? Are you good with that one bottle and that one product? For now, we're sticking with the one bottle and product, um, but we will expand into more kind of rare species, kind of the higher end product. Mm -hmm. But we're not looking to have like an army of Mescaloon flavors. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. not. When not. We got the hit single. Yeah, that, that's honestly. Right. That's all you need. And it's on replay. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. great. Um, I'm laughing when. Um, Rebecca joined Roni and started being in the mix a little bit more. Was there a part of you guys who were like, oh, should we get back in the handbag? Or were you like, no, she, that, you see the work that is going into all of it. You're like, thank God we are not doing that. Not, neither, neither of those, but the irony was not lost full <laughs> circle because when we had our handbag business, she was like at her peak. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked up to her and her brother as CEO. So it was just really a funny full circle moment for us, I think. That is funny. Yeah, and she's. I, I like her. She's. Yeah, she's I fun. like her too. I think she's adding a lot of fun to the group. Like, the camera will cut to her, and she'll be saying the most unhinged things, talking about her diva cup exploding out of herself and breastfeeding her husband. Yeah, like, <laughs> I know. I don't know if her husband filmed or not, but really cool guy. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah really. I like know. Him. I feel bad that not all the, some of the ladies. Well, at least I think. Mean, I think mainly Bryn isn't a fan of Rebecca, but she seems like, a, I mean, we've hung out with her a few times. She's a cool energy. She's yeah. cool. Yeah. She's yeah. cool. She's, she's got a, she, I, I appreciate like a dark sense of humor. Mm. Yes. And it's very like <laughs> a dry darkness. Yeah. 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 I'm what Jewish, do you think so. of uh, Raquel entering the group too? She sort of shook things up. Love Raquel. Love Mel even more. Yeah. She, oh, she, sorry, she Raquel. Loves you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, she, there's some funny things I think they'll show. I'm assuming they will. But we became legitimate friends uh, pretty quickly. She's a very sharp woman. I mean, you know, neuropsychologist, like, yeah. um, like really sharp, but also just has a really dirty, dark sense of humor. <laughs> so immediately we we're like, all right, that we could be it. creeps together. Does Aaron have to worry about you being on a motorcycle? Because that would freak me out. Not yet, but I'm, I'm tempted. Very tempted. Mm -hmm. It might happen. Okay. Might happen. Okay. Okay. I know. I would. I I got like whenever I watch those clips, I get very anxious. They look they look, they look so cool. fucking cool. Oh my god, it looked like literally I saw like that. Fast I'm like, you guys are cool. Yeah, they, it was like a legit movie. They're really giving those along. motorcycle yeah. scenes. Yeah. Wait, but um, so I'm glad you were getting along with Mel and vibing with everybody because it seems there's a lot of moments for Erin. Unfortunately, she's having her ups and downs with the ladies, and I know couples they vent to each other the most. So I'm just curious how how do you think Erin is overall doing with everybody right now? Hmm. Uh, oh, are those an outliers? What's happening? No, no, I just, uh, I don't know if I should be gossiping about the girls. Uh, you're at oh, page six. What? <laughs> you're with I the girls. I'm just, I'm just, um. She's good with some. Okay. Some. Is she good with Jenna? Because I know we've been seeing yeah. a lot of, okay. Okay, I never expected to see them sort of butt heads, yeah. But yeah. I'm glad that Erin expressed herself if she was feeling that way. Like, she was feeling like Jenna Me wasn't too. the best friend. Me too. I didn't like seeing them. At all. I, obviously, I opened yeah. my stupid mouth after I had too many drinks, and yeah. I was like, F <laughs> shut up, dude. But, um, but, like, I love Jenna. Aaron loves Jenna. So I didn't like that they were fighting. Not fight. They weren't even fighting. They just, <laughs> like, there was unresolved tension yes. is, I think, the words that I use. 
But uh, no, they're cool. Okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Aaron and Bryn were kind of stressing me out because they were not getting along at the beginning of the season, but it seems like they have patched things up. And then we see in a flash forward to the credits when, when the girls were filming that, that obviously Bryn and Uba are not getting along. And Aaron and Jessel kind of feel caught in the middle. What was it like seeing Aaron navigate the Uba and Bryn feud? Because it seems to only be getting worse in real time. Are you talking about from the Hamptons? Oh, it, it, I, it seems from then on, like I like from the Hamptons to present day on, so, like they just seem to be having a struggle. I think I have to watch the to rest watch. of the season. Okay. okay. Does, does it, it get worse? Yeah. I don't know if I can say. Yes or no? Does it get worse? Do you feel like it gets worse? It does. I did. Aaron say it gets worse. Your hands are shaking a lot. Yeah. I feel like it gets uh, no, worse. No, no, no. I'm I, like Teresa Caputo. I'm like, I'm send. your hands are shaking. No, I just feel weird talking about the no, girls. That's I don't right. know. Yeah. I, that's the one topic that I is, is there prefer a, not to talk about. Is there it's anything? Because that's because you want, you hope all the tension is resolved. Is no. there anything? Like, do you? Otherwise, there wouldn't be a show. Oh. Oh, well, that's, okay. Yeah. True. Oh, okay, producer. But are there moments like from, because I'm sure, of course, like Aaron Richardson home and like vent to you. Are there, mo- like, do you, when that happens, are you someone who's like, I hear you? Or are you more like, Actually, I think you should see their side. Like, how? Like, how does that? Probably the latter. Okay. Well, it's oh, good. no, that's good for her. Good, I yeah. would be so annoyed in the moment. Well, no, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, I'm annoyed for you in that moment, it's, even though it's for the best. It's context based. Sometimes I'm like, that's f-ed up with so and so did. But usually, I mean, I'm a lawyer, so I'm always thinking about okay, yeah. what's the other side, and uh, even if just to pose the question. Mm-hmm. But you know, I oh, see that would set me off so much. Yeah, I mean, I think like I just imagine coming, but it makes you think of it. No, it makes no. You're doing the (laughs) right thing, but I would imagine you come home and you're like this person, blah blah, and you're like to pose the question. Yeah, that's me. I'd be like, and (laughs) you are Aaron. If I was Aaron, I'd be like, (laughs) actually, I'm not mad at Jenna anymore. I'm mad at you. (laughs) So maybe you do help her with the girls. (laughs) I'm usually the target of uh, many, many of an ire for being a reasonable reasonable person. Wait, what's your sign? Uh, Taurus. (gasps) Wait, when's your birthday? April 27th. Okay. Wow. Just Taurus like uh, Seth Marks. Ooh. Oh, really? Okay. Shout out Seth, 427, Wait. brother. Okay, that is fun. You're kind of giving me Seth Marks energy. I love Seth. So I much. love Seth. He's, so he's, he's a cool dude. Wait, can we talk about some of the friendships that you guys have built within the Bravoverse? Like, who do you yeah. feel like you're closest with across franchises and stuff? Obviously, the Marks. Yes, yeah, Seth and I are pretty friendly. Uh, I have a, a really interesting friendship with Terry Dubrow. I really like him. Oh, he's a cool vibe. He's, so he's nice. awesome. He's so yeah. He's a cool dude. Him, yeah. And he's been in this world, so, oh. you know, he's just interesting to talk to. Yeah. Uh, hung out with Joe Gorga a few oh times. He's I cool. Love, I'm obsessed with him. He's, that is a good bridge know, and tunnel energy, the two of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's, he's a very deep guy. Oh. Deeper than you think. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's, you follow him on Instagram, the quotes he posts. Yeah. Yeah, but, and it's just in person, too. It's just he's, he's a lot calmer on one-on-one, yeah. and I appreciate that. Um, I've met a lot of, you know, one of the fun parts about being in this world is meeting different people mm-hmm. and you get to know some of these people and I don't really to be honest I don't watch shows I mean I watch our show and mm-hmm. I've seen clips of other shows but I don't really watch shows start to finish but you know you know who some the of the characters are, are. Yeah. so meeting them in person I'm usually pleasantly surprised by their character mm. okay. you know what I, I I don't know if I want it to happen or I don't want it to happen at Bravo, Miami Fan Fest because when you and Aaron came in after BravoCon, I think we accidentally got Kyle and Dorit mad. Do you remember that? But yes. I think they worked it out, right? Yes. Or ish? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're going to She doesn't talk about that. I saw, so. oh, okay, good. Because Kyle's going to be at Miami. I feel like maybe they can squash it. They the can beef. squash it. I watch what happens live or something. Yeah. I don't think there's any beef. Okay, good. No? Okay. I don't the think Aaron thinks twice about either no disrespect no that's right yeah like, it's, it's not so funny like i feel like because aaron also kind of did that with the roni og c- cast when she said that their girls trip was cute and i honestly think she meant it in from like <laughs> the she, most did, she didn't mean way. it i don't think yeah. she meant and then it they got shady got so upset but i think it's because she has like a dry sense of humor that yeah. or like it's like like a new york vibe of like it's cute yeah, yeah. i think a lot of and this i think it applies to to both me and aaron we're New York Upper West Side Jews. Like our humor is is just that, <laughs> uh-huh. and and I don't think a lot of people understand that. So they just they're just so cynical about mm. you know we're making a joke. Like when I said <laughs> other women last season, it was a joke. Like it was yeah. in front of Aaron, and there was a much deeper conversation that was happening prior to that that they didn't show. But 
like anybody who knows us or knows like that humor would have understood that mm -hmm. instead of all the, the insane speculation of being over literal about mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's just one example. So, yeah, I think Aaron, uh, like people misunderstand her humor with that. I feel because it's, it's also funny, too, because there are no, I'm not name names. There are a lot of housewives that you meet that like to talk a lot about housewives and everything like that. And Aaron is not that at all. Which is like a very breath of I have, fresh. I have thoughts. Yeah, oh. what, it's, it's the housewives be talking about housewives all the time. Well, I, I just what I've come to experience, and it's very interesting, is that there are a lot of not just housewives, but a lot of the house husbands too. Oh, where it's yeah. their life. And to me, it was so odd because I mean, I've only been on, we only did one season now, it's two obviously, but like we have lives, and when we're not filming. I don't think either of us ever really think about the show. Like, we have mm -hmm. jobs, we have business that we're building, we have kids. But for many people, it's just kind of eye opening. Like, that's their life. It consumes and a it's, bit. it's, it's, a lot. it's, whatever. I'm not yeah. judging. It just was different for me. Yeah. Now that you know how reality TV works and also kind of how the fandom operates and even, you know, how all these reality TV stars are just talking about reality TV all the time, is there anything about the process that has surprised you? And I'm also kind of curious to know if you had, like, were you a fan of reality TV going into this? Did you have a relationship with the Real Housewives franchise? I had seen some of the original New York years and years ago okay. when Erin and I used to watch shows together. Now we <laughs> kind of have a, an unspoken pact. If she wants to watch her shows, I'll watch my weird fantasy adventure shows. <laughs> we don't need to be involved in each other's wor wor uh, you know, worlds like that. But, so not really. Mm. But what was the, the other part of your question? I guess what surprised you the most about just being a part of this world? Is it the fact that all the housewives love talking about housewives and even the house husbands or like what has been kind of the weirdest aspect of it for you? This is going to be a weird answer, but I, what surprised me the most was how much I would like the crew. Oh, the production I, crew. That's, that's amazing. Fun. That's fun. That's great. Yeah, that's a great yeah I really like them. And they become out. your family kind of like you're with them. They're in your house um, filming or, you know, you get to know them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, anywhere from the production team, the audio, the video team, uh, post-production. And even though I don't always like how they edit me, mm. I get it. And yeah. like there's, and I'm like, I like them. I really, I, I enjoyed it and I like them. I also feel too, because I mean, I think it's such a fun, hard thing to describe. Like, you're like, to like your kids, like, so this is a show. I feel like they're just like, oh, our friends are over. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> they're like, oh, sweet, kind we're of. having a party. Yeah. It's like, no, you have to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> How do you explain it to your kids? Do they understand that mom and dad are on a show and that mom's famous now? They kind of do. Mm -hmm. We get, what, what, you know what, what they know is that we keep getting all these gifts, or she keeps Wait, getting all I've these gifts. I've been seeing her posting that. They're already sending yeah. her all the time. <laughs> yeah. So now they're, which I don't like, because now they're used to like just stuff coming, all these mm. packages all the time. Oh, like, I'm where like, are our packages? <laughs> like, yeah. They want mom and dad to send them. No, they're starting to get stuff too. Oh, oh that's cool. I'm Maybe the only one who doesn't get anything. Okay. Oh, that, that's if I had anything, I'd, I'll just yeah. send you like. Sorry, I don't. I don't wear. Yeah, it. I was gonna say I don't. I don't want to I'm a simple you. man. Yeah. I, I wear this shirt a few times <laughs> okay, a week. Okay, I'll send you some more black t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I needed. I'll give you an old navy haul. Yeah. <laughs> well, you and Aaron have been together for such a long time since you were so young. Was reality TV or fame ever on your vision board? Because when you were explaining how Aaron was on the private jets, when like she was a little baddie from the jump. So uh, it almost seems like she somehow attracted this. Well, yeah, we're both big believers in the law of attraction and uh -huh. manifesting love, yes. things. It wasn't, I mean, had we talked about it? Probably, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that she ever really actively pursued. But when the opportunity came, it made sense. I wasn't surprised, uh -huh. I guess. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, let's just give this a try and see what it's like. I don't know. What I'm also curious too, because I feel obviously people see you guys out about because they stop you and tell you their thoughts <laughs> about y'all's life. What is like, have you, and I know it's hard to juggle with work and kids, but do you guys have like a kind of like classic lychee date night move or situation or is, does it kind of fluctuate? Like if you have a free Friday night, where are we going? Shabbat dinner. Okay, nice. A Saturday <laughs> night? <laughs> We're, you know, the past like year or two, we've become like such old folks we'll go because we got during the week socially for so many events yeah. that to be honest we have got a date night still here and there but we just really enjoy just quiet time just the two of us 
Yeah, I enjoy it probably more. I need. I'm like a very needy, uh, emotional man. Oh. <laughs> Aaron's like, I need, I need space. <laughs> I'm like, please. Wait, that's, that's so cute. That's so sweet. Are, are the kids involved in the quiet time, or do we find a babysitter when we like want to like really um, quiet time? No, there's no quiet time when oh. you have kids. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. And also, kids in the city. You're either like no. a kid is crying or a horn is honking. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, but the kids are usually there. They're sleeping, so. It's tough. It's tough when you've got kids that age. Like my kids are 10, seven and a half, four and a half. They're very needy, which uh-huh. is like I love, like we both love being parents, but it, it's draining. Mm. And so you come to appreciate even having it. Like yesterday, yeah, yesterday we were able to get rid of all three of them for two hours. And it was just on a Sunday afternoon, just we hung out oh. and it was like it was really nice it was really really nice so those things you come to appreciate more I love that. but then i think about i hear all the time from friends of mine who are older whose kids are into college and then like i'll look at my daughter she's seven and a half i'll just start like crying like tearing up like she's gonna be in college soon oh, oh my god i feel like time does go by yeah. fast did the, did the seven and a half uh, years go by really fast yeah like, yeah. like that it's crazy okay well i hope they all go to school in the city <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no no i want them to, yeah, you want to visit. You want to go to fun places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I went to Wisconsin. And, like, I wouldn't. I would want them to have a college experience. experience? Mm. That yeah. is true. That is nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I feel like I wish I was your child and lived in the city with you. Like, honestly, well, that, sounds, you. that sounds so nice. Oh, he'll, they'll adopt you. They'll we'll adopt, adopt you. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that's amazing. Great. Yeah. I've been looking for oh. new parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> so <fun>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Wait, but uh, Jessalyn Pavitz. Jeff just literally wants to expand her family, but Pavit's not about it. As a father of three, do you have any advice for Pavit and or Jessel? What do you think they should do? The babies it's are not on my ice on Rodeo Drive. It's or what I am wondering. It's, it's their it, decision. Like I, I, but like as a parent, because people always like when um, is what's the bigger difference going from one to two or two to three? One to two. Mm. So after you have two, you can just like yeah. Kind of, okay. although, and people said this before we had three, like you become outnumbered. You guys are outnumbered. And I'm, I'm, like, uh, I'm like, okay, well, what does that actually mean? But now it's because now we're constantly playing a game of whack a mole. So, like, one of them putting to bed, then the other one's making noise, but then we have a third one. And so it's just, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. But definitely one to two. Okay. Huge difference. Because I feel that's when you're, li- and also, especially because you're probably like, Oh, I finished all the diapers. Hey, we're back to the diapers. Yeah. yeah. That would be yeah. the hard reality. What's weird is you forget all of it. Like, <clears throat> when we had our second one, I'm like, oh, what age do they start doing this? What age? And then on the third, same thing. It's just, it's such a blur. You're in like, a, you're, it's a mind. <laughs> like, it's a mind. <laughs> like that, when they're first born and like that first year, uh, especially for women, because all the, the hormone changes oh, gosh, and yeah. it's like a very physically traumatic yeah. experience. So. Yeah. It's a lot. Okay. You and Aaron make it look easy, though. You do. Oh, thank you. You guys really do. Yeah. It's not. Okay. Well, that, well you guys put <laughs> a lot of not. work into it, your relationship, yeah, but we love your our business. Kids. Yeah. Oh, no. And you, we love watching you guys on the show. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us. Yeah. yeah thanks for having me. We're excited to watch the Mezcal Loom premiere party or launch party. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for, for the world to discover <laughs> Mezcal <Loom. laughs>